with a gladsome voice, hymn 390. Let's try that. Let's start out with 390. I know we're getting into, this is a Christmas hymn, but um, we're limited on Advent uh, hymns in the new hymnal. Three ninety, three nine zero. Oh, let's sing the first two verses. <laughs> some voice praise the God of heaven Warming a hymn on a cold night. Three eight zero three eighty. I heard. And uh, let's sing the first and third verse. Hark the herald angels sing, hymn three eight zero. Beautiful. Let's try another one. 376. Just back up a few pages. Once in Royal David City, let's do uh, 1, 4, and 5. 1, 4, and 5. We're on 376.
I think we have time for another one. We've got about 600 to choose from. Don't be shy. 374, Gentle Mary laid her child. 374. And let's sing one and three. Thank you for a beautiful start in our worship. Opening hymn is hymn 890, O Blessed Light, O Trinity. Jesus is the Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Oh, 
let your light scatter the darkness. Joyous light of glory, of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. Son and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with your voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Put your marker here on page 247, and our first psalm for our responsive reading is Psalm 92. Psalm 92. We'll read responsively by verse. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. We declare your steadfast love in the morning, and your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your word, have your mercy your hand sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord, your thoughts are very deep. That, but you, O Lord, are on high forever. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And next we go to Psalm 122, and we'll do the same. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. Their thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll sing the office hymn, 517, verses 1, 4, 1, 3, and 4.
ever reading from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Luke, the sixth chapter. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. In these days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Share with you again Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, 15 through 17. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. In our first Advent worship last week, we were introduced to Saint Andrew whose ministry focused on pointing others to Christ. His witness still resonates today in such ministry, ministries like the Lutheran Layman's League, whose motto is bringing Christ to the nations and the nations to the church. It is to Jesus we go for God's completed plan for our salvation. And speaking of plans, I brought along this evening one of my favorite magazines, Woodworker's Journal. It's a wonderful read. They have articles in here that evaluate new tools about the latest woodworking uh, techniques. They have beautiful pictures of uh, projects that others have done around the United States. Again, a great read. But that's not the main thrust of this magazine. You can read it all you want. The existence of the magazine and the priority of the magazine is to do the project. Tonight, we who have been brought to Jesus by God's grace, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in holy baptism, have now a life-fulfilling and rewarding honor to do Jesus. And so this evening I introduce to you Saint Ambrose of Milan, Italy. He is a fascinating read. He was born around 399 A.D. in Trier, Germany, which geographically makes him the first Lutheran Christian. He is the son of a Roman prefect. A prefect is a Roman politician. 
Ambrose followed his father's footsteps and studied law. By 370 AD, he had become the imperial governor of northern Italy. The Lord had gifted this unbeliever with oratory, good judgment, skilled management, and honesty. Now it so happened at this time, the bishop of the Church of Milan in 374 died. And so there was a vacancy. There are three out of four congregations in our regional ministry that know all about this situation. Well, Ambrose, it so happened to be at this time, was looking into Christianity since it was prevalent in his area of governing. It's only right for a good politician to find out what part, uh, what big, what, uh, what what the people of his, uh, of his area are believing. Well, evidently, the call list for bishop was short, and the declinations were coming in. And to be honest, I would decline this call as well. The congregations in the Milan area were in a theological wrestling match with Arianism, which is a heresy that teaches that Jesus was just a man and not divine. A note here. How many of us think we can't do anything for Jesus because we don't feel that we're qualified to be an elder, a Sunday school teacher, a pastor, a teacher, a trustee, a guild member, a congregational president or vice president, usher, greeter, choir member, musician, voter, visitor? Get this. A majority of these offices that I just listed, Ambrose wouldn't be qualified to fulfill in our congregations today. First of all, he wasn't baptized. Nor had he finished his adult, in, uh, adult information class, his catechesis. But yet, because of his God-given skills, the Christian emperor and the neighboring bishops convinced him to accept this call as the will of God. And to think that we don't qualify to serve the Lord in a church office? Within one week, he was baptized ordained as the first deacon or an elder, then he became a priest, and then finally a bishop. You talk about a railroad job in the church. What would you do if you were tapped tomorrow to be the bishop of the Missouri District, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod? Well, here's what Ambrose did. He was profoundly aware of his lack of preparation and ability for this great responsibility. And so immediately he set himself aside for prayer and get into the study of Scripture. And through those early years, he developed a love of God's Word that was married together with his oratorical skill that he acquired in law and politics, and that made St. Ambrose one of the greatest preachers of the early church. For Ambrose, Scripture was more than just a good read. <coughs> he saw in Scripture the Christ child, the promised Messiah, the Savior. He saw the atoning sacrifice of the Son of God. 
He heard the call to repentance. And he was comforted with, comforted with the peace that he had with God because of the forgiveness of his sin. This is what needed to be done for God, who so loved the world. So what did Ambrose do with the power and the skill God gave him? About his second or third year into his calling, he had the guts to call on the carpet the Christian, the hypocritical Christian emperor Theodosius I to repent of his sin of massacring 7,000 citizens in Thessalonica or be excommunicated. Theodosius did this horrendous slaughter because the governor there died what he considered suspicious circumstances. Ambrose loved music. The first hymn we sang this evening was authored and composed by him. And he had no qualms about setting the scriptures to popular tunes. He was a prolific writer, especially on the sacraments, emphasizing God's grace and mercy. There were many students and people that came to listen to him because of his oratory skills. And there was one such young man from northern Africa that had heard about Ambrose's style of preaching. And so he came to Milan to study Ambrose's techniques. And the long story, story short, he too became a Christian. Augustine was his name, who now also became a second career churchman. Baptized by Ambrose and a student of his, together with Jerome and Gregory the Great, these four made up the, the first original doctors of the Latin church. How about all of us here in Coal Camp? How do we do Jesus? Are we challenged by the calling to be Christ's child in this town and county, state and beyond? The project before us by Jesus is to go, make disciples, baptize, teach. Teach what? Jesus says, everything that I have taught you. It's a good read indeed. Now St. Paul steps in here with his letter from to the Ephesians in chapter 5. And they're simple to-dos for us, but it's a lifetime of challenge to do. Make use of every opportunity. For what? As Andrew, to bring people to Jesus any way you can. Use your God-given imagination. Just do it. Don't be foolish. We know the difference between right and wrong. We have been given the gift of the Ten Commandments. You shall and you shall not. How to love God and how to love our neighbor. Do it. Understand God's will and take it to heart. God wants all to be saved and come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immerse ourselves in God's Word. Take His sacraments into our lives and the delight that we have in Him. And He produces and He, and he promises that out of that life with the Holy Spirit will come these fruits. Be patient. Kind, gentle, loving, joyful, good, faithful, and self-controlled. Don't get drunk. Live with a clear mind. Live buzzed, die a fool. Make melody to the Lord with your heart. 
hum a tune and put God's word into the melody. What a way to expand and enhance and better the lyrics we hear in rock and roll and country music. Give thanks to God always. Gratitude. Remember where all good comes from. Christ Jesus, with an open arm, gives us his best. There is a humbleness involved in doing Jesus and woodworking. God's plan of salvation for us was completed with Christ's atoning sacrifice and resurrection. It's all pictured for us in Scripture. In this journal, the plan of the project is all laid out. Measurements, materials needed. They even give you a beautiful picture of what the project should look like by the time you get done. Do the project. In Holy Communion, Jesus states, after his body and blood are identified, which are the building materials of our church project, he says later in Matthew, go, make disciples, baptize, teach what I have taught you. I'll be with you. Yes, and with St. Ambrose, and with our whole lives, as each of us are gifted by God. We do this. We do Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Let us stand and rise for the canticle. We're on page 248. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in the Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in the
may be seated for uh, the uh, song from the choir. The uh, offering will be taken on the way out of the uh, sanctuary. There'll be an offering plate. So we'll listen to our choir. <laughs> Let us rise for the prayer. We'll follow the litany on page 249. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Matthew Harrison and Lee Hagen, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for Barack Obama, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, 
Let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this guy, these congregations, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Have for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.